I think I know just the place. All right, what up? So, as you can see, um, we're back, and uh, it's been a while since Rob's been here, but... Yep, four months. We're here. Um, as you can see, we're spiking our insulin right now. Um, well, I am, he's not. He's, I'm just having a normal meal, he's but I'm training normal. a little bit, he's, so... Yeah, so what we're doing right here with the cereal is the topic of the day. What is insulin? Why is it anabolic? When to use it? How to use it? Um, one of the things I want to stress is being natural professional bodybuilders, when you have opportunities to take advantage of something that is anabolic internally, you need to use that and run with it. Like absolutely just run with it. So post-workout, insulin is basically going to come down to two things. You can either have it store fat or we're going to have it be a delivery driver for macronutrients. And one of the primary things that we want to deliver is glycogen, refilling the muscle, protein post-workout, repairing the muscle. So with that said, how do you do it, when do you do it, and why is it anabolic? Um, one of the quick things I just want to show you guys is why I have this here is I have cereal. The cereal is pretty much... Just carbs, no car fat, low fat. What would you say the sugar is? Every eight grams, it, you know, nine grams of carbs or eight grams of sugar, something like that. It's gotta be pretty close. Five, six grams of sugar for nine, mm -hmm. 10 carbs. For that. For that cereal? Or yeah. I don't think it has that much sugar. But 50 percent sugar. Depends on which. You know, yeah, yeah. Depends on what cereal you have. It could depend on any any of the cereals that you're eating. So like maybe Fruity Pebbles will be a little higher. These are actually a little lower. Yeah. They're Cinnamon Checks. Um, they're actually, uh, not Cinnamon Checks, but they're some sort of Wegmans brand Cinnamon Squares. But mm -hmm. they're a little bit prep friendly. So I continue to eat them in the off season. It's just the only difference is I get to eat a little bit more because in the off season I'm trying to grow. So the weight's gonna be going up slightly. I mean, for me, I go back to a higher weight, but we'll get into that in a little while. Um, I want to get into uh, real quick, like w why should we spike the insulin? So you know the quick analogy that you have, uh, I like a lot with a car. Oh, why would you why would you spike it when? Why, well, why would wouldn't you, you spike the, the it? post workout anabolic yeah. window? Because we have guys why would you eat things post workout more 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 post workout as opposed to just any other time of the day when like. You know, people say like it doesn't matter, you know, you can wait, it doesn't matter if you eat it right away, but it's like being optimal. Why would you change a transmission in your car on jack stands if you got a lift in your garage? Right, exactly. You know, you're just going to get more benefits out of having, you know, you know, st strategize your uh, eating as far as post-workout, having more carbs, um, you know, good sources of protein, quick digesting protein, it'll get to the muscle faster. And, and this is another thing that we get into, like, yeah, exactly, like, just the digestive process of things. So, like, the whole reason behind insulin is with, like, high glycemic carbs, spiking blood glucose. Yeah. It delivers, insulin delivers nutrients to the cells, so the quicker you do that post-workout, the quicker you're going to recover. Um, and generally speaking, like... Um, you know, you got some stuff out there because the whole per premise of this is with insulin, like timing it correctly and when you're supposed to eat uh, at, at this at this time and it's a post-workout meal. But when, why, how? And, you know, you get a lot of people that sit there and they'll be like, well, you, you don't need to eat the protein and the carbs post-workout. You, you can intermittent fast. You can wait. It's, it shows this. The studies show that it's going to be just as good later on. And it's just not correct. With that analogy... We were just saying, you if you could intermittent fast and you get the same effect, why can't you just wait till the next day? And then after your workout's done at 4 p.m. one day and you wake up the next morning at 8, you're gonna, your protein that you consume is going to be for the, the workout the day before? No, absolutely not. Isn't yeah, you're, you know, you're sitting all night. Your body's breaking down muscle tissue for fuel because right. you don't have those nutrients in you. Exactly. And then the other thing, too, is when, when we have... Um, insulin as as an anabolic hormone what's going to happen is is we are in a catabolic state when we're working out we have a breakdown of muscles so what do we mean by catabolic is um it's pretty much you want to mute that yeah 
So uh, what do we mean by catabolic? That means the breakdown of muscles. So anything like um, cortisol. Uh, it's, it's like if you're stressed, you're gonna spike cortisol, that's gonna be a breakdown of muscle tissue. You don't, you don't generally want these things to happen, but they're gonna happen during a workout. So the epic rebound can happen post-workout with insulin, which is anabolic, not catabolic. Catabolic breakdown of muscles, anabolic yeah. building of muscles. IFBB pros, you know, exactly. they take insulin for that exact reason, you know, exogenous insulin injected, you know, kind of like steroids, people that, you know, are not tested for sports, you know, even, even people that are, they want to, you know, if they're cheating or whatever, they'll take, you know, take insulin to, you know, grow bigger muscles basically. And, and this is exactly like my whole other argument behind this is like when people say, well, why would you do insulin spiking afterwards? It's like, why wouldn't you take advantage of that? It's one of the only times of the day where you can naturally get this insulin spike and promote such an anabolic response when it is stimulated. We don't have the opportunity to inject a uh, third party substance into our body, such as an insulin, uh, you know, injection, like a lot of people do to get extremely huge because it's so anabolic. So, you know, at one point during our day, or maybe even two points, if you do a two a day, mm -hmm. you're going to have this window of opportunity. It's, I'd say it's generally between, you know, 30 minutes to you know, 15 to 45 minutes, somewhere yeah, in that window. Even more like it's, and it, if, if you don't have something within a half an hour, it's not like, it's not like it, an hour is going to kill you. It's like the sooner the better. At that point, it's just like the sooner the better. Right. You know, if you can't, you know, if, if you drive home and, you know, you, you have something going on or something distracts you, it's just more like the sooner the better. Don't like wait five or six hours, you know, to get those nutrients in you after a workout. It's just going to affect your recovery um, in the long run. Right. And then, uh, so yeah, so then, you know, people sit there and they still say, well, it's bro science, it's bro science. It's, it's absolutely not bro science. The other reason why you want to take protein along with these carbs to spike insulin, and this is just our whole topic, this post-workout meal, this is what we want to talk about. Um, if you have a positive nitrogen balance in your body or a negative nitrogen balance in your body. It's the same exact concept as being catabolic or anabolic. So this actually goes into a precursor to why you should consistently spread protein out evenly throughout the day because you want to try and be in this positive nitrogen balance where you're building muscle because that's the only way to build muscle is to be in a positive nitrogen balance. If you're in a negative nitrogen balance, your body can't build muscle. It's going to break down that tissue. So... When you sit there and you say, okay, we got insulin, it has, it has this job to store fat and deliver macros. But post-workout, it's going gonna, it's gonna to deliver macros more so than it's going to store fat. Why? Because we have tissue damage inside your muscles that are sending out signals to the body that it needs repair and it needs refilling. Yeah. If you're training intensely, a lot of people, especially during prep, they'll think, oh, I don't want to like... Overeat after. Yeah, I don't want to... Um you it's know, the best un time undo, of the day. Undo all those calories that I just burned. You know, I Talk just burned all those calories. Uh, I don't want to oh, bring up a slingshot right now with your metabolic rate. Like how fast that could speed it up. Yeah, and like pounding a big meal. Training, you're, you're and you're already in a deficit, calories. and you're 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 dead on with your prep, and you're making sure the meals are the same, and then you have that post workout meal, and it's huge, and it's full of like you got a good portion of simple carbs and complex carbs with respect to insulin. It's like unless you're literally binging thousands of calories, you're not right. gonna. You're not. It's very hard to store. Store as fat post workout. Uh, you know, even even deep into prep, I'll take in 100 grams of carbs in my post workout meal. Like, yeah, exactly. And um, you know, so yeah, they they sit there and they think uh, there's no really need to take advantage of that, but it's huge because, like you just said, it's one of the. Here, here's basically what he was just saying. Why can't I eat a Snickers bar at night and have that be an anabolic response in my body? If I could eat Snickers bars, I, like. People will be, or maybe a Snickers bar is a bad example because chocolate with a fat. Let's just mm -hmm. take Sour Patch Kids, pure sugar. If I eat the Sour Patch Kids, now, don't get, like he said, if you eat anything in too much amounts, it's going to be a spillover effect, and it's going to end up causing uh, the wrong effect, if you will. You, you can overeat post-workout. You'd have to eat a lot, and it would happen. But um, one of the things that we could talk about is take the Sour Patch Kids. If I eat Sour Patch Kids all day long, I'm not having this anabolic response all day long. Like I'm going to have a lot of responses that are going to get fat storage going, lipogenesis. Yeah. Yep. And that's why people who are eating this kind of stuff all day long are getting fat. And then people like us, 
look like we do and check us out on instagram you know you could look us up we're not uh just sitting here bullshitting you like some people on youtube who look like slobs like we we walk the walk we talk the talk i'm not trying to clout and tout that we're the best but we we looked the part um so these people eat these uh simple sugars all day long and they and, and then why wouldn't they get this anabolic uh, effect like we do it's because post-workout you have this window of opportunity where muscle cells are damaged and they're sending signals we need help we're broken down we're torn and then i was going to have you get into like uh you know the differences between like doing like arms versus legs yeah true something like legs you're going to need a lot more carbs a lot more fuel so and you know that's how a lot more I, tissue breakdown the muscles that's how i stay pretty lean in the off season i adjust my macronutrients based on my activity level if i'm doing legs i'm gonna eat more that day whereas if i'm just doing arms right. or if i'm doing something you know if i'm not working out i'm not gonna i can eat as much especially you know carbs i'm not gonna have that you know high carb meal that day yeah and then you know <laughs> we sit there and again you know we've gotten questions uh like i just going over like some of the stuff that we've had asked um, recently with us because we, we like to discuss this stuff online and um, that's why we make these YouTube videos. So like one of the one of the people said, it was a little strange, but he was like, well, if you don't, it, it, if, if it's anabolic post-workout, um, you know, well then what are the rest of your meals doing? Like, what do you even need them for if it's just that one meal? We're not saying it's that one meal. Like nobody's saying that this is the like most, you have to do this. Basically, you could eat totally different than what we're saying. And you could make progress by not eating protein post-workout. You could literally just skip protein post-workout and you could still mm -hmm. make progress if all the other meals are the same. What we're discussing here is how to take the dollar and maximize it. Stretch it as far as you can. We're not going to buy an item for 97 cents. We're going to go buy the whole dollar. It's going to be gone. We want to take that whole optimization. That's the, that's the name of the game. You want to be optimal. So, yes, something works, but there's better ways to do it. We got places on trains, but then we got places faster on airplanes. Yeah. It's just that simple. Yep. So on that note, we're going to be having more. So stay tuned.